Hello everyone and welcome back to the Java video tutorial series. This is video number six now um, and it's going to be covering the topic of primitives. Uh, you may have heard me mention the term primitive before and I might have just kind of blown right by it but now I'm going to uh, go in depth uh, in this uh, video and explain to you what a primitive is um, and I'm going to kind of um, compare and contrast a primitive against this thing called an object okay so I will be covering those topics um, quite intensively and uh, hopefully you learn a lot so let's get started what is a primitive well you've seen it before it's it's essentially just a variable type um, that is a little bit special and what I mean by that is that is it has a um, a special syntax in the way it's actually written out or typed into uh, the the your IDE your your um, Spring Source Tool Suite. Um, let's see. So integer, boolean, double, float, uh, char. Um, you should have come into contact with all of these variables either through the uh, video tutorials or through the homework that I've been uh, sort of assigning you. Um, so these you're all you're familiar with all these and these are these are known as primitives. And the special syntax that I mentioned is is that they're all lowercase. Okay, int boolean double float char. All of these are lowercase letters, and that represents the primitive type. Okay, now I said I was going to sort of compare and contrast the primitives against an object and actually these are known as the object counterparts okay or the wrapper objects um, so the wrapper object for the int type is the integer object okay and it's the same thing here integer is still a variable type that is used inside of Java um, the only difference is uh, other than the fact that it's it's use a capital letter to um, start the variable type plus we spell it all out instead of int it's integer uh, as I'm sure you can see um, but using the object counterpart actually sort of enables um, a little more um, flexibility it enables a little bit more functionality um, with the actual object type okay now I will explain uh, what I mean in detail so don't worry if you're confused um, so here we go this is sort of the 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 one-to-one -one mapping here every single one has its its counterpart so if we were to think of you know what the difference was between the primitive and the object counterpart um, you could think of the primitive as being sort of the uh, I don't know the 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 little brother and the <laughs> um, object counterpart is sort of the the big brother okay um, so what I mean by that is is these object counterparts um, are known as wrappers okay um, so what is a wrapper well if you think of um, what an integer or rather an int is capable of in terms of a perhaps a diagram um, I would say that you know let's say this circle represents the functionality of what an int is capable of in the Java programming language well the integer counterpart wraps the int primitive so this could be construed as the integer um, counterpart the integer wrapper okay in terms of functionality so the integer has far more functionality um, than the you know integer primitive by itself the integer wrapper is fully able to uh, carry out all the tasks that the int primitive is able to do and then some okay but the only drawback here is that because the integer is able to do so much more it's a little bit slower okay it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit less efficient okay so the primitive types um, 
you could think of them as um, the efficient little brother, okay? Um, whereas the object counterparts um, have more uh, functionality, okay? Functionality. Did I spell that right? Functionality. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Again, sorry for the hand handwriting. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight around uh, what an integer is, or not an integer, a uh, primitive is, and what the object is. Okay? So now let me go a little bit further into that to explain um, some special characteristics of the primitive. So one thing that uh, separates primitives from objects, or I should say another thing that separates them, is um, is the default value. Okay? And that is the um, the actual value that is contained inside of the uh, variable when it is sort of created or brought into existence. Okay, so if you look at um, if you were de to declare an integer, okay, um, now I'm generalizing this a little bit. I'll, I'll show you why when I go into the actual code, um, but I'm uh, but you know, take this for what it is for now. Um, when I declare an integer, or sorry, an int primitive, um, like so, it actually will uh, receive the value of zero. Okay? So the, um, the int here will automatically be populated with an actual value without you specifically saying anything. Okay? Um, the same goes for pretty much any of the of the uh, of the primitives if you look at um, a double you know you declare a variable double you know variable name D uh, that will get the default value of 0.0, .0 okay um, what else do we have uh, char C um, that will get actually kind of a confusing default value if you print it out it, it kind of displays as blank um, but it actually receives, I think it's a, a Unicode um, value of, you know, U-0000, which actually represents, um, uh, I believe, a null Unicode. Um, that one's a bit obscure. Uh, so I, I like to focus on, you know, int, or int and uh, the doubles. Um, they get the default value. But if you look at um, the actual uh, integer counterpart, the... Uh, the wrapper object, um, if you declare uh, a, a variable using the object wrapper, uh, the default value for this um, is null. Okay? Empty. Nothing. Zilch. Um, and if you look at double the object wrapper for that, exactly the same thing. Null. Nothing. Um, character. Okay? Same thing. Null. So I think you get the idea here. Um, the uh, object wrappers have no have no way to to assign a default value, and that is because they are objects. Okay. So in Java, every object is sort of treated equally at the highest level, um, and, and this is one of the one of the constants, one of the things that uh, that will always happen when you declare a an object. And you don't actually instantiate it or give it uh, assign it any sort of value. Uh, you will receive it will be filled with null. It will it will have nothing in it, and that can be a little bit dangerous because if I then reference one of these um, objects in code and, and try to do something with it, um, I'll get a null pointer exception. So I'll actually get you know some some nasty things happening in my code. Whereas if I use the primitive counterpart. Um, and I accessed, tried to access the value inside of the primitive without assigning a value, uh, there would be no error. It would just be treated as, if it's a, you know, int, it would just be a zero. If it's a double, a zero point zero. If it's a char, it'll be the, you know, default Unicode null uh, representation of the, um, uh, of the actual value inside. So, um, it's, it's a little bit, uh, I suppose you can say safer in the sense that you won't get an exception. But that can also turn around and bite you um, because you'll get maybe some strange functionality because you won't get an error popping up saying, well, hold on a second, you haven't yet assigned a value. 
Um, instead, you'll just, you know, the code will treat it as zero, and perhaps that might, you know, do some, some strange things depending on how you treat, uh, you know, zero instead of, or as opposed to a null. Um, but in any case, I, I wanted to point that out, um, that there's this concept of a default value that goes along with the use of the primitive types. So now I think what I want to do is I want to jump over to uh, some code where I will uh, show you some of the differences between how a primitive functions versus how the object counterpart, the object wrapper, functions. Um, so I want to show you some of those examples and give you a good idea of, um, of how these things actually function. Okay, so let's jump on over. Okay, so now that uh, we're in the code, um, I just want to quickly uh, elaborate a little bit about what I was alluding to when I was talking about the uh, declaration of the uh, primitive types, the primitive variable types. Um, so let me give you an example right now. Um, if I were to declare um, the integer i and then try to um, actually output the <clears throat> the value uh, print line for the variable i, um, we would actually get a compilation error. So you hover over it and it says the local variable may not have been initialized. Um, so it's actually not, when, when, I, when I said that it assigns a default value, um, it won't do it in the case that you have um, what's known as a local variable. Um, and it's a local variable because it's, it's um, it's only inside of the scope of these two uh, curly brackets, curly braces. Um, but if I were to move the declaration of this variable up uh, here into the um, uh, instance variable section and make it static, my apologies, static, um, then we are then we're okay. Um, so the reason why, uh, and actually let me just, let me run this program so that you can see what the output is. And you see the output is zero. Um, so the default value of an integer is indeed zero. Um, so the reason why it does this is because um, when, when the variable is declared locally, the, the, um, the IDE, Spring Source Tool Suite, knows that the variable has not been initialized, so there's no way that it could have been initialized because it's a local variable. Um, however, when you move it up to this section, uh, which is sort of in the scope of the class, that's known as an instance variable. Uh, it means that the variable belongs to um, a particular instance of this class, this object, um, except for the fact that I made it static um, but that's a whole other discussion, uh, and I will get there soon. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, for the sake of primitive types um, and explaining the default values that go to primitive types, um, there you have it. The uh, the instance variable, when you declare it, uh, it assigns a default value because um, it, the, the um, program, uh, the IDE, uh, and Java in general won't know... Um, if uh, whether or not this variable has been initialized because there could be um, some other piece of code that would have come in and set uh, that value um, to set that variable to have an actual value okay there's just it it's possible that um, a piece of code could have done it somewhere uh, and there's no way for um, for this application to know so it allows you to actually declare the variable as um, uh, like this without a default value. Um, so now to show you the other uh, variable types, I can change this to double and I can rerun the program and you see that it's a 0, 0.0. Okay, um, I can change it to char uh, and run the program. Actually, what's the shortcut key? Alt, Shift, X, and then J. So I'm just going to do that from now on. Alt, Shift, X, J. There you go. So now when it runs, um, you see that there's a, a blank character here. And that was that um, special character that I was talking about um, 
uh, I think it was U backslash zero 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 zero. That's the um, the character representation. I think of the the or the Unicode representation of a zero value, which is I think a null value. Um, so that's that's how it comes out. It's just a blank space. Um, and what else did we have? Uh, oh, boolean. So a boolean is another variable type, another primitive. So Alt Shift X J will run it. Um, so when that outputs, you see that it's false. Okay, that's a default value. So that's just to show you it, that there is this default value thing. Um, it does happen, and um, I'm not just making it up. Now, let me change all of these so that we actually can see all of the values at once. Um, double char and um, we'll output all of them J K L so that way we can sort of see all of the default values now let me also declare the wrapper counterparts so let me declare integer and let me say I2 or something like that um, and then we'll do a double and a character j2 k2 and we'll do the boolean l2 um, and I'll do the outputs Ooh, lots of copy pasting two two and two okay so I'll run this now and then you can see the difference between the um, primitive and the wrapper counterpart. Um, Alt Shift X J to run. So now you see the primitive value is zero, the object counterpart is null if you don't assign a value. The double is 0, 0.0, the counterpart is null. The char is that sort of blank character, the object counterpart is null. Um, boolean is false, object counterpart is null. So that's just to show you that when you use the um, object counterpart of the primitives, you see that there is no such thing, there is no default value that Java assigns um, to these variables and it will be null. Okay, so um, that's a good little uh, demonstration of the actual uh, differences between um, the primitives and the wrappers. So now let me show you um, the benefits of using the object counterpart, the wrapper, or the big brother, however you want to look at it. Um, so let me let me move these things down. Let me just work with the integer for now. Um, let's see, one of the things that's neat about integers is you can actually um, uh, did I have the right one? I2 is an integer, yep. We, you can actually do a two string on it, okay? So you can take the um, <clears throat> the value of the actual integer uh, and, and you can cast it, sort of. You can, you can turn it into uh, the string uh, representation of the object. So if I were to actually initialize this as, let's say, one, um, and let me... Let me comment this stuff out just so we don't get bothered by it. Um, and let me just focus on this. So if I were to run this, you'll see... Um, sorry, I forgot to do a system out. You can actually do a system out on this. Da -da -da -da, like so. Um, you'll see the same output. So these two um, are perceived as integers. But when we do a print... Um, a print on the actual object that we pass in, so we're passing in, um, in this case, i and i2, it actually, the print line actually translates it into a string, and then we see a string as an output. Um, but here, we're casting it to a string first, and then outputting it. So although it may look the exact same on our output, it's actually a little bit different. It's actually quite different. Um, and the reason for this 
the benefits of this is comes from a situation where you have, let's say, um, some sort of a method that will only take a string as a parameter. Okay, so if I were to create uh, a private static, um, let me do void. Oh, what can this method be called? Um, I guess output, and it wants to take a string um, as a a parameter. And let's say we do a system out um, on the actual output variable. Okay. So if I were to try to pass the information along um, from these two variable types, the int or the integer, into this output method, uh, you'll see that we will have some problems. Um, so the this output method is essentially the exact same thing as I was doing before. It's just outputting the code, or sorry, outputting the value of the variable onto the console. Okay, so if I were to say, okay, well, I want to um, call the output method, and the output method wants a uh, a string. If I were to pass the i character in, you see that it's it's not happy. It's saying the method output string um, in the type primitives, and primitives is just the uh, the name of the object that we're dealing with, um, is not applicable for the arguments int. So what what it's saying is you're you're trying to pass in an integer or an int primitive um, into a method that can only take a string. Okay, so there's an there's an error. So we're in trouble um, if we're in a real world situation and there's a, a method like this one and let's say we're not allowed to change the method for some reason um, and that definitely does happen in the real world you don't want to mess around with um, the the parameter here because I could just change the parameter to be int and then everything would be happy but in the real world sometimes you're not allowed to do that because uh, that could mess up a whole nother whack of stuff um, so if all we have is a, a primitive we're in trouble there's nothing we can do but if we have the integer, the object wrapper counterpart, um, then we then we can do something, because right now right now it's not happy because now we're passing in an integer, and if I hover over this, then you see this uh, has changed to the full integer um, object wrapper uh, type. Um, it's saying it's trying to pass that in, but it still wants a string. However, because we're using the object wrapper, it has more functionality than the primitive type. So like I said, remember that little diagram I drew with the small circle and the big circle? Um, the big outer circle represents the integer uh, counterpart, which has more functionality. And here is exactly where the functionality is. You can say to string, which takes the integer and turns it into a string, okay? Returns a string object representing this integer's value, okay? So let's do that. And now you see that it's happy. Um, it's compiling and if I were to actually run this um, then we get the proper output in our console um, so even though we have an integer we are passing the integer into something as a string so we're converting um, so to speak the actual type of the variable and that's just one of the little helper um, methods that you can do with object uh, wrapper counterparts to the uh, primitives. Okay, um, other things that you can do. We hit to the period here to see what we can do. Um, uh, we can get the byte value, um, which I mean that's generally you'd use byte stuff, uh, byte values when you are dealing with files and file systems. Um, I don't do that too too much, but <clears throat> you can certainly do that. Um, you can even get the float value. Okay. So I mean, you you can picture a um, well. Let's let's see what that what that outputs. I'm assuming that would just um, turn that into a um, number with a decimal. Uh, let's do float value <clears throat> and let's run it and see what we get. Yeah, so it just turns it into the um, decimal representation of the integer value. Okay. So previously the integer was declared as 1 and now it's 1.0. 
So it's the same kind of situation. Let's say that we have um, a method that only takes, um, you know, float values. Well, then we can call instead of saying doing system dot out here, we can call the output uh, method, and then everything would be happy. We're passing in um, the float value into this method, and there you go. So there's just little advantages that we can get um, from using the object uh, wrapper. Um, obviously you get the long value, the short value, um, even a max and min uh, for the integer class, uh, which in some cases that could be useful. Um, it, there's all sorts of different things that you can do um, that, that are helpful. Um, mo now most of these, when you see this little S here, um, that's actually the static uh, helper method. And again, I don't really want to get into static stuff. Um, but let's say you want to go the other way around. Um, I have, um, I can actually parse an integer. So let's say I have a, a method here that, that wants an integer. And all I have, let's say, is a string. Okay. Um, actually, let me just change this to be string. Um, so if I have i2 and I want to call output and I want to pass in i2, um, it's not going to be happy. Sorry, let me just change this to a string. Um, it's not going to be happy because now this um, uh, method now wants an integer and what we're giving it is now a string. So we can actually say integer dot parse int and it will take the string value um, of the variable, okay, the string um, one inside of the variable i2, and it's going to turn it into an integer and pass it into the um, the method. So you can go backwards and forwards. So that's kind of nice. You can turn a string into an integer, and you can turn an integer integer into a string. Um, very helpful stuff. I, I definitely use it um, consistently in my in my programming. Um, so that's the flexibility that I'm talking about um, that co that comes from these object wrappers and I mean if you have a um, um, a double variable um, j2 let's say is a double I mean this has the same thing it has the byte value you can get the float value the int value um, you could even check and see if it's a number or not it returns true if the double is not a number uh, false otherwise um, so, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can use here that would be helpful um, depending on the situations that you run into with your programming. Um, so, I think that's a good place to stop. Uh, I think I've hit you with enough information. Um, so the most important thing to walk away from uh, with this tutorial is to understand the fundamental difference between a primitive and the object wrapper counterpart. Um, to understand that the primitive is, um, there's less you can do with a primitive, but they're definitely more efficient. And it's a result of the fact that there's less that you can do with it. Um, it's more specific to do one thing, and, and it does the one thing really, really well. So um, it's faster, it's more efficient to use. So if you have a system where you, or a program where you need to be doing a lot of calculations, um, an example of that would be like, uh, you know, taking a, a type of uh, unit, like a, a, not a measurement, what am I thinking of, the um, coordinate system. So if you have a certain, like a latitude and a longitude, um, you know, latitude 32 point whatever, and you have, you know, longitude, you know, 48 point so and so, such and such, um, and you need to convert um, those coordinates into, I don't know, the, I've heard of a UTM coordinate system, um, which is a different way of 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 um, displaying a certain point on the planet. Um, the the formula that's needed to convert from latitude and longitude to UTM coordinates or vice versa is very very intense. There's a lot of calculations that go with it, and then you'd probably want to favor the use of primitive types because they'd be faster and more efficient um, rather than using the object counterpart, which would definitely be slower. Um, because when you when you do these conversions, they're they're straight mathematical conversions. You don't need to be dealing with, you know, strings and and, and modifying and looking for the maximum value and that kind of thing. 
um, you're just doing straight mathematics and it, it's completely possible to do that with the primitives. Uh, so then you would favor the primitives. Um, and then if you run into a situation where you need more flexibility, you can use the object counterpart um, for that. So but that's really the main takeaway from this tutorial. Um, and the fact that when you have a default value, um, the default value for the objects are null, and the default value for the primitives vary, but it's generally a zero for an int, you know, 0, 0.0 for a double, etc. So that's the takeaway, and hopefully that all makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, if it doesn't make sense, you can absolutely go to the forum. Um, you can post in the forums um, a question. I've created a little uh, folder for that for the programming questions post your question in there and uh, if I don't get to it then someone else um, in the community will alright so take care of yourself and uh, I can't wait for the for the next lesson